So a common problem people have is that when they learn some things from a guitar player, it doesn't really stick with them. It doesn't last. It doesn't become a part of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how to get the most out of what we learn from another player like Jerry. And we're gonna do it by looking at three different little spots, licks you could say, or just more like ideas from the jam during Mississippi Half Step and from Dave's pick, volume th 34 again. Thanks, Victor, again for this show. I've been just listening to it so much. I love it. The more and more I listen to it. So let's just get right into it and let's listen to the theme of what's going on overall. But let's start with the first one. Just give it a quick listen. <laughs> Right, so that's how he starts it off. Let's listen to it again at half speed so you can really hear the details a little more. So, what do you think is going on there? Yeah, a lot of things, of course, but first off, you know, we're in the key of A, it's just jamming over A to D, this whole jam section, uh, very different than the rest of the tune, right? And um, he's just up here, you know, just playing around with the A major pentatonic, right? Like this, but instead of going like, like that, he's, he's starting off with this big bend, and then, you know, something like that, and it's kind of, He's sliding it down to this position here, so, which that is just a great thing in its own to, to kind of know that rather than just sticking to one strict position, but kind of sliding between that, you know, knowing you get your A here, your A here, right? But then the real thing I want to point out is right here at the end going... So he's repeating this idea of this to there, and what is going on there, but over the A chord, he's going like this. He's playing, you know, chords, uh, notes from the chord, so C sharp, which is the major third, and E, which is the fifth, but he's approaching it with a minor third, so just a half step below, and that's outside of the key. So a lot of times people just get stuck in just using one scale, and a lot of times that's all you need, but it does help to spice it up to throw in just little things like that something that he would do all the time. And then kind of slide around on here doing whatever and then doing the same thing here and that's now outlining the D chord. So here's F sharp, the major third of D, and A again, which is actually now the fifth of D. So, and then doing it the same way. Just repeating that idea, recycling it, but not doing it exactly the same, but doing it in a different spot over a different chord, so a different situation, but the same, you know, overall idea. So how do we, you know, you know, get the most out of that, you know? Try it in a different position. Don't just play it just here. You know, the best thing to do is you play it as much as you can. Memorize it, get it under your fingers, of course. You know, notice all those things, like I said. You know, don't just kind of play it however, but notice, oh, that's the major third, the fifth, and really notice those sounds, you know? Right? But then try it somewhere else. So, and if you're thinking like, I have no idea how to move something around, just think about this one spot. Think about this, this, this fifth, right? That target note, right? Just think about playing it over here, right? So if you don't know how to do that, just think about, okay, go over one string, down five frets. One, two, three, four, five. There's that same note. If you're doing it between these strings, it's four frets, everything else is five though. And then you've got the same thing, right? Right, now if you were doing it for this spot, same thing, one, two, three, four, five. So you've got, and you could look at the greater picture of, you know, we've got over here. And then it starts to really open things up so you're not just playing it in one spot and it, it really not only does it open up the 
areas and the spots you can play it, but just your greater understanding of what's going on and this the specific kind of like lick, if you want to you know, call it that or what you want to call it. Um, it just it gets in your ears and in your fingers so much more by playing it in all these different ways and different angles. And one thing that can really help is to know the chord shapes you're playing around. And one of the best ways I think is to know the cage system, which is just, you know, an acronym for the open chord is you know, C, A, G, E, D. And I have a, a cage cheat sheet. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description down below where it's just got it all mapped out with the chords and with the scales and arpeggios and things that go around it. So say, you know, you're playing up here, thinking about this, this is A in the G shape like this, right? And you just got that pentatonic over here. Now over here, when I was doing it this way, that is A in the C shape. It's just like C, like this, and, and so on and stuff. So, so check that out if, if you haven't already. But that is, you know, the way to kind of get the most out of it, move it around, and just use your ear. You know, you can, you can, you can think about it. Okay, this is E, you know, C, C sharp. E, C sharp, C, C all stuff, and, and know those notes, or even better, know the, the kind of theory behind it, like this is the fifth, minor third, major third, and, th and things like that, and it really kind of links, the, you know, the uh, the fretboard up in a more musical way, but you can also just use your ear and just kind of, like over here, like, oh, I did the same thing, but here, that's not the same because these strings are tuned differently, so... Oh, you gotta move this down a fret. And that would be around the E shape, you know, and so on. So that is a way to kind of get the most out of a little simple idea like that. Let's listen to the second one now and see if we can do the same thing, you know, with that. Cue it up here. Back to full speed. So right there, right? Real quick, here it is, half speed. So I love that that kind of bluesy, you know, really sweet bluesy sound. So that's just, you know, up here. So that's just taken again, same position, right? And he's actually doing this, uh, it seems like, you know, something you kind of play over the A, but he's actually doing this over the, the D chord, the four chord, but he's just going down, down like this, and then bending this note, if you can see it all in one string, like that, but it's a little tricky to get the next part here. So there's all different ways you could play this, but I like to do it like this. So you're playing this note here, bending it up to this. So it's like going like this, right in a row, this little chromatic thing, but he's bending instead. And then going, so it's very bluesy, but it ends with a, more of a major pentatonic part because of this note right here, that major six. So it's kind of like nitty gritty, and then sweeter, right that. So I, I just love that lick. But then, best thing to do, get the most out of it, try it out in different places. And if you can, you know, get use your ears or think about, you know, the notes or the theory. So this is, you know, this is an E, so this would be the fifth of, of, of the key of A, if you want to just think about the overall key. Finishing to A, so think about those two notes, the beginning and end, starts on the fifth, makes its way down to the root. So you can think about it like right here, right? How would you do it here? And you have to adjust some of the shapes because of the, the tuning of the strings here, but. Or you could do it like this. You know, do this here or there. So experiment around where you would place it and which fingers, you know, are you gonna use your strong finger or just use the pinky, you know, it doesn't really matter. There's no like exact way to do it. This is something that you just spend time, you know, working out different ways and trying to see what's comfortable for you and what, you know, works for your hands, your fingers and things like that. And, um, and notice, you know, as you're moving around, the different kind of timbre, the sound of the, the strings, the tone, you know, like here. Sounds different than... 
because it's thinner there, you know? And then you can try it, you know, in different, different octaves on here, like... Uh, right? Or you can do it down here, you know? Like that, you get real nitty gritty. And an easy way to get a lot of mileage real quick out of this is to play it in a different octave, but the same kind of uh, fingering, same position. So say like the one I just did right here. But do it up here. Right, so the very first one. Now move this down here. So this E to this E. And notice how it fits into the overall you know, key, the chords, things like that. And, uh, and yeah, you just keep trying it. And you know, I know I just went real fast right there, but just try it real slow, something like this. And you don't have to try it with this, but try it with whatever you're learning next. You know, just try this approach of, of just moving things around and really getting to own it. And it may seem like a lot, but if you just you know, sat down and picked one little thing like this and worked on it for 20 minutes, think about how many different places and different ways you could play it and how it would really open things up, you know, for you. So let's check out the last one here. Uh, get it back to full speed. <clears throat> So he's doing something here, back up to here. So, so kind of like that, right? So he's back in that same spot, right? So he's using the spot a lot, but he's starting off this time with D, the, the fourth scale degree, one, two, three, four. So it's giving it, and it's over the A, right? So it's going over that A, giving it this kind of sus sound. And the thing I think that's most important about it is it's just that he's got a clear theme and he keeps repeating it and gluing it all together. So I... And then when it switches to D, that note he lands on, hangs on, what is it? But F sharp, the major third of D. So, um, you know, outlining that chord. And that's kind of the theme I'd say overall with a lot of this, particularly a jam like this, is he's not just grabbing a scale and going with it, but he's playing the chord tones as they happen and really stressing them, you know, like right when it happens or later and it's hold, holding on, you know? Like even without hitting that root note, you can kind of hear that, that, that change. Whereas if I just went, kind of like kept noodling on, it, would, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense, you know, it wouldn't glue it to the chord. So he's got that. And then the other important thing is he repeats it again, right? So he does that again. So you don't want to just kind of be playing whatever, you know, come up with a clear, simple little melody like that. And then don't just play it and move on, but just keep repeating it or develop it or try it further up. I mean, maybe you play it down here. And then... You know, and so on. So I hope this stuff is, is helpful. You know, I originally wanted to make these, you know, the style of video kind of like a reacts thing where I was just gonna watch, you know, and, and listen and figure out on the fly, which I think I'm gonna do more of that. The first one I did with US Blues, but I'm gonna try out having kind of a different kind of angle for each one. And this was getting kind of the most out of some little specific things. And if you want to learn more about very specific devices that Jerry did, things I call language devices, so narrowing it down to a language, check out my free little um, mini course. I call it the five day Jerry Garcia challenge. It's all about I Know You Rider and a few different devices, kind of like what we looked at now, but getting a little more specific and a little more in depth, or very much more in depth. So I'll put that in the description down below and also check out that caged uh, cheat sheet as well and uh, have fun with that and i'll see you in another video if you're looking for something else to watch right now check out this video right here this is the u.s blues one if you didn't catch it now uh, if you didn't catch it out before you can catch it out now see you then